Something else very interesting about black boxes is that you can actually save maps and materials in them. Uh, here we've got a category under black box called M3D gradients and these are some gradients that we made uh, previously. Um, basically they are just a helper called text map color. And text map color has a slot here for a material map. If we go ahead and expand this, we'll take this age gradient uh, black box that we'd saved and we'll drag his map slot into the material editor as an instance. And we can see that it's just a gradient ramp with a bunch of colors there and we had assigned that to that, saved this as a black box and now every time we use it it's going to actually pull in this material with it. So it's kind of a nice handy way to actually um, have materials automatically brought in. Let's take a look at what that can be done with uh, shape materials. We'll go ahead and set up a standard shape. We'll set it to cube and let's go ahead and make a red material. Maybe not quite so glossy. And we'll go ahead and drop that red material into the material slot for standard shape as an instance. And we'll close the material editor. And we're going to go ahead and save this. Uh, we're going to rename this standard shape. We'll call it red cube. And what we're going to do is we'll right click and say save because all we want to do is save this one operator or the selection. We don't actually want to save the dynamic set too. We just want the operator. We'll say save and here we are in the test2 directory. We'll just call this red cube. Now there's no particle groups involved. There's just the standard shape operator. So we don't really want to create any new particle groups nor do we want TP to ask us every time. So we'll just say none. Okay, so if we get rid of that and now if we come back and we come down to the test2 category for black boxes, here we now we see this red cube. Um, we can go ahead and drop that in there what do we get? We get the cube setting that we had set and it also pulls in this material. Uh, just to re-illustrate and double check that, we'll reset max. Create our thinking and there's our red cube and boom. Uh, so even though our material editor is empty right now, it has brought in this red material for us. So just kind of extra little handy thing black boxes will do. It'll store maps and materials for you. So far our black box examples have been really simple and that's fine. They can be functional that way. But we want to go ahead and create something a little more complex. So we'll go ahead and create a couple particle groups up here. We're going to create a red, color him red, and a green group, and color him green. And we're going to go ahead and create our first rule. And actually with this dynamic set selected, we're going to go ahead and hit create again and it will create a child dynamic set underneath that. And in this dynamic set, we're going to call this born. What we're going to do is grab a generator, particle draw, and we'll just go ahead and draw some particles. And we'll scrub to see those. Okay, right now they're being born into the all group. Let's actually have them be born into the red group give them a lifespan of 100 and then we'll just go ahead and duplicate this particle draw and we're going to remove those particles that we had drawn we're going to set the group to be green we're going to draw over here and now we can see that when we update these guys are being assigned to the red group these other ones are being assigned to the green group and let's go ahead and do this let's create another rule that says we're going to call it move at birth and we're going to rename the all group we're going to call this simple and what we're going to do in this rule is say I want to affect simple particles uh, when they're born so we're going to use a particle age condition and when they're born I want to just want to give them some velocity so we're going to control this velocity to turn on only when this particle age condition is true, which is set when they're born. So that output boolean is going to control this velocity, and it will only happen at the one time when they're born. It's not going to be a continuous update. Okay, so we see what happens here. This guy's go moving off. Let's give him a little variation, a little more speed, and some divergence. 
Okay, so the particles go flying, that's great. Let's go ahead and make it a little more complex. Let's add some force here. Let's put a gravity. And in order to get forces to talk to TP, we're going to use the space warp binding and bind that onto TP. We select TP, look at the modifier, and we see that gravity binding's there. Let's go ahead and switch our view around. And then we're going to create another rule here. We'll name it forces. And what we'll do is, this time we'll be a little different. We'll just affect the red group. And we'll say, okay, well, red is going to be affected by a dynamics operator called standard force. And standard force is what we're going to use to deal with uh, the forces that we assign. And there's the gravity of one we created. We'll activate that so it's in the active list. We'll make this connection here. And now what we'll do is go ahead and scrub to see what happens. Okay, you can see that the red particles, yeah, they don't really go very far, and then they get affected by that gravity. Um, let's actually change the standard force a little bit. We're going to add a float helper, drop that value into the multiplier, and we're going to want, oh, let's say just a force of uh, 0.1. So now only 0.1 gravity is being is affecting these uh, these red particles. Boom. Okay, so pretty simple there. Let's go ahead and see what happens. We'll call this, uh, we're going to rename this top level dynamic set uh, basic system. And basic system contains these other dynamic sets, which each have their own set of rules and operators in them. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save basic system. So we're going to use this button here with it selected. We'll save it into the test2 correct uh, directory. We'll replace that previous basic system we had. Replace, yes. Now particle groups after loading, um, in this case we'll just go ahead and have it request. And let's go ahead and what we'll do, let's reset max. And we'll create our particle system thinking, let's actually create the gravity while we're here. Remember to use the space warp binding. And let's go ahead and get into TPUI. Okay, and so here what we're going to do is uh, we'll just go ahead and create a new rule. And then into this rule, we're going to plant that black box we created. We'll come over here, find the test2 category, and basic system. There it is. We'll drop that in there. Now it gives us the request prompt. Um, we'll just say exist or create. So if it can find the groups that say that are used in here, it will use them, use the existing, otherwise it'll create them. So we'll do that. And you can see it recreated simple red and green for us. Uh, those were not in there before, so I just had to make them. And now we take a look, we've got this uh, basic system, this is just how we saved it. We've got the born, the two particle groups, we see those markers and then the move at birth and the force. Now very interesting here, the force assignment, uh, the gravity does not is not kept track of. So you'll have to come back in and modify your forces to activate them. Not a huge deal, but yeah, it could be improved. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens. Same kind of behavior. So this is just a, a simple example of how you can save multiple groups with hierarchies, save, you know, What's, what's the beginning of a complex system? You can save entire particle systems, a whole series of rules, um, compartmentalize that into a black box, save that black box, and then be able to access it at any time. 